C++ is a general purpose programming language that has been in widespread use for nearly 40 years. But is it worth spending time learning and understanding this monster of a language? Well, as most things when it comes to software development, it depends, specifically in what you're looking for. Therefore, we're going to look at some of the reasons you may want to learn C++. Uh I'm going to give a contrarian opinion, which is, I think you should learn C or C++, regardless of what your goals or outcomes should be. You should do it because it is really good to understand memory. And even in Rust, to really appreciate or understand what Rust is doing, a bit of knowledge of C++ or C is not bad. When I say C or C++, I don't really care which one you choose, long as you're like in the process of manually creating and destroying memory, right? Even Zig, in some sense, Zig kind of has this abstract, a slight of diff a different abstraction, a different abstraction where it's like a little di bit different. I, you could substitute Zig in there. You could substitute Zig in there. All right, someone is saying uh, reduce the OS volume. You might, you might be, you might be correct. I, I did something recently. Uh, I'll put, oh yeah, let's go like that. There we go, baby cakes. Let's go. I had to turn it up because of something that was happening earlier. So here we go. Let's do this again. As well as some of the reasons why you may wish to avoid it. C++ is perhaps one of the most versatile languages out there. In fact, I'd argue it's perhaps the one language that can do it all. To give some of my own history, okay. C++ was the first programming language I learned, and because of this, it has enabled me more than anything else. I had originally wanted to learn how to code video games when I was younger, in which C++ is highly used in the game industry. Mm -hmm. However, I quickly- I learned with C Sharp. I did XNA. Back when I wanted to be a game programmer, I used X and A, C Sharp. Come on, you remember that little render, render update, Cornflower Blue, never at the touch, Win32? Man, I could be a Chad GPT poem creator just there. Found no. that C++ could be used for pretty much any software project. Yep. Including web APIs, mobile apps, data science, embedded systems, cross-platform, GPU processing, and many others. Yeah. C++ really can be used for pretty much anything. Therefore, by learning C++, you're guaranteed to have a language available to you that you can use to build whatever you want. C++ is fast. In fact, C++, along with C, are often used as the baseline languages for benchmarking performance. The reason it's so fast is due to its low level of abstraction within the language and the fact it compiles down to machine code. Therefore, if you're looking for a language that is used in mission-critical applications where the lowest of latency is required, then C++ is a fantastic choice. Okay, okay. These are all good reasons, uh, practical purposes for why you should consider using C++. Uh, just putting it that way, it's a good reason to consider using C++. It's not really why you should learn C++ or the heart behind it, but it is good application space to learn it. I, I can agree Due with to these this, things. C++ is used in a number of industries where other languages just aren't viable. One of these industries is finance, where even a few milliseconds of latency can cause a good trade to be missed. Jane Street, I mean, so there is a little bit of a weirdness to that. So anyone that's doing that type of trading, especially like Forex exchange, that kind of stuff, you know, Forex stuff, uh, usually, that stuff is all done with programmable FPGAs. And so you're not really using C++, you're using FPGAs. And Jane Street, I think, uses OCaml to program their FPGAs. So is that, you know, entirely accurate? Maybe it's not entirely accurate. Uh, let's just be real. When I built my own little trader and lost thousands of dollars uh, on the Bitcoin market, uh, I, I wrote that. I wrote that in JavaScript. Okay, so I mean, look at me. I, I made multi negative thousands. I bought high, sold. Low. I literally did one time buy high and sell low. Uh, I was, I was super good. As with all power, there are caveats. However, because of C plus low level of abstraction, advanced topics such as memory management or thread synchronization aren't hidden away from the developer. This means whilst it's possible to write very performant code, it's also very possible to make some pretty performant mistakes. Because C++ provides very little abstraction, it means that many concepts that are hidden away in other languages are able to be learnt when using C++. Topics such as pointers, mutexes, pass by reference, pass by value, the heap versus the stack, and many many others are all hidden away in higher level languages such as Python, Go, and even Java. Not entirely true with Go. You kind of need to know when things should be heap versus stack allocated. And then on top of it, there is 
you know, there is pointer receivers versus value receivers. And, you know, like there is, there is some level of knowledge when it comes to this, that it's not, it's not, it's not entirely accurate to say that. Um, Rust almost has like a completely different kind of structure to it. Do you know what I mean? Like Rust is kind of, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of unique because uh, because references are are types, right? And so it kind of causes like a, a uniqueness, Mut mutability almost as a type. And so it's like it causes some. It's a little different, right? So it's kind of hard to put it in these exact same bounds, even though pass by value versus pass by reference, like that does exist. Whatever, blah 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 blah. But it's just like when you're using it, it just feels different. You know what I mean? Also, uh, I just noticed that uh, there's been quite a few follows, and I did want to shout this out that we are so dang close. Look at that, hundred and thirty. Four left. Let's go. All right, back to the value. 134 left. That doesn't mean they no longer exist, however. Quite the opposite. Correct. It is just that the language does a very good job of preventing the developer from ever needing oh, to I interact love. with them. But that doesn't mean it. developers shouldn't know about them. And by learning and using C++, you'll encounter all of the... Little finger is the worst. ...these concepts at some point in your journey. You'll also be able to bring this understanding and knowledge to other programming languages, which can help you to make better decisions when building solutions in the future. When you mm -hmm. are presented with these problems in your journey to learn C++, it can be- Whoa! Are you saying you liked Littlefinger? Oh, really? Sympathize? You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this one? Littlefinger. Yes, that's exactly what you should do. He was- I celebrated the day he got his throat sliced. Yeah! The man was evil. Really helpful to have access to Little a Finger platform killed which can explain- Okay, uh, I love Littlefinger. Uh, to be completely real, uh, did, did he really kill Joffrey? Was he the reason Joffrey was killed? Was Littlefinger? If that's the case, love him. I, okay, Joffrey was my least favorite character. Jo from the very beginning, they, I swear when they tried to cast that guy, they're like, who has the most punchable face? And they went that way. Okay, sorry. Let's get back on track here. We're trying to learn about C++. Some of the more advanced topics in a fun and easy way. That is where the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org, can help. Mm, Brilliant, Brilliant is the best way to learn computer science, math, and data science interactively. Mm. If you're looking to learn C++ or any other programming language, Brilliant can support your journey by providing customized content that fits your needs, whilst allowing you to learn at your own pace. Brilliant also supports different skill levels and is great for both beginners and advanced learners alike. I recently helped someone dive into learning Python code in order to begin automating aspects of their job. Brilliant was the perfect tool to allow them to easily understand the basics, starting with the Thinking in Code course. This course teaches the fundamentals of programming, such as loops, algorithms, conditionals, and arrays, and does so in an environment without needing to write any code. After completing this course, it was then much easier to jump into some actual Python code in order to solve some real-world problems. So, to try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free, visit brilliant.org slash dreamsofcode, or click the link in the description. The first 200 will also get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. A big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Oh, thank you, Brilliant. The fourth reason I believe C++ is worth learning is that it will likely always be in demand. As I mentioned, I C++ has been around for nearly 40 years, and it isn't going anywhere anytime soon. I think there's actually something to be said about its demand, which is that there's so many systems out there that have been created around C++, and as C++ is kind of, it's long lost its vogue, and so on average, people aren't kind of like learning or becoming experts in C++ outside of the gaming industry, and... I feel, or outside of the gaming, maybe the embedded industry, one could argue that there's some C++, but, you know, as far as I can tell, it's mostly a lot of C. Uh, at least when I did it, it was all C, right? Uh, and so when I look at this, what I see is that there's going to become a very valuable job market because as that niche becomes smaller, as the people who can write C++ reduces, it simply just becomes massively more expensive to hire. And thus it will become a more valuable and desired language, right? So there's kind of this weird cyclical nature of programs, which is like, you know, it starts off, it's the bleeding edge, cool thing to use. This is where everyone's getting paid. It then goes down because everybody now knows it. And then everyone stops using it. And then all of a sudden it goes back up because now people aren't, uh, you know, uh, there's just less candidates available, right? It's the supply demand curve, just in the most beautiful kind of way. I, you can imagine that this happened with React too, 
when React started to come out and it was the big W and all the startups were using it, they were all looking for anyone who was adept at using a, rap, a React, which was a small pool of candidates. And then within a few years, it's now like a legacy system in so many start uh, in so many c companies that hiring React engineers, uh, you know, engineers who know React is exceptionally simple now. So it's like this funny thing. Uh, RxJS was that way. That's how I got hired at Netflix. Big companies such as Google, Apple, and Adobe are heavily invested in the C++ ecosystem. Niche com Not only this, niche. it's also used in many other industries, such as video games, movie production, telecommunications, really, movie production. scientific research, and financial, as we mentioned earlier. Even the Bitcoin source code is written in C++. <laughs> Imagine if Bitcoin was written in JavaScript. Therefore, if you're interested in a language that will stand up to the test of time, well, C++ is one of them. Yep. And even though C++ has been around for a very long time, this doesn't mean it's outdated. Which brings me on to reason number five. Ooh, this looks like a double-edged sword right here. C++ was created back in 1985 by Bjorn Straustrup. Since Chad. then, it has become a standardized Chad language by the International Organization Prime. for Standardization. You know, isn't it kind of wild to think about how old the technology is? And even wilder to think that uh, TCP was invented nine years before this. And even wilder to think that I believe Vi was invented 11 years before C++. Bill Joy was like, yeah, and did that. Dude, it's like, it's kind of wild to think about all the tech we use today, like how actually like long ago it really was and how well these things have stood time. It's it's kind of, it's, it's wild. Also known as ISO. This means that versions of C++ your university professor implemented TCP ISAP? Ho, 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 ho. What a Chad. Plus plus are actively developed and standardized. And since 2011, new versions have been released every three years. By the way, the compiler largely is like stuck right here. <laughs> we're, we're still trying to implement 2017, boys, okay? We're not up to 2020, okay? What is all this 2020 talk? Oh gosh, there's still 2023. We got <laughs> new features and improvements. Okay, hey, just because more, uh, just because features keep on going until morale improves doesn't mean it's necessarily good. So I actually would consider this as one of C uh, C plus plus's biggest weaknesses, is that it's it's extremely, in some sense, unlindy in the fact that if you look at C written ten years ago versus C written today, it's pretty much the same. C written twenty years ago versus ten years ago versus today is pretty much the same. But if you look at C plus plus twenty years ago, ten years ago, five years ago. Two years ago, one year ago, today. Like, they're all very, very different. And is that a good thing, a bad thing? There's good things about it, but there's also really just bad things and annoying things about it. And so it's it's definitely not like a huge W. Uh, but I would say unique pointers were awesome, right? The fact that C++ has unique pointers, I'm happy about it. It has shared pointers, I'm happy about it, right? There's some good things about it. It's to the standard library. Despite the language being centered around low-level abstractions, we've seen a number of new features appear, such as smart pointers, lambda expressions, automatic... <laughs> lambda expressions. Have you ever wanted to hate syntax? Well, let me show you a lambda expression. You know that one meme with the guy sitting there is like, I hate myself. And he's like, here, look at this. And then it's a C++ lambda expression. And he's like, I hate this. I, I hate this more. That's pretty much me when I see that. So I'm going to take a small little picture of this little bad boy. And we will be using it in a meme shortly. Um, let's go over here. Uh, there we go. Let's grab a little bit of this. Fantastic. And MIT licensing. Lambdas are nice. Sure, they're nice. Not in C++. Oh, you don't define your capture group? Type deduction, and many others. Having these features in C++ allows it to have the best of both worlds, enabling developers to either use modern features to ease development, or to dive into lower level abstractions for greater control. It's your choice. Yeah, I feel like that's... You know, Dreams of Code, I feel like that was a little bit of a happy painting. Maybe throw a little, little couple cons in there. You know, a couple cons were well-deserved. But overall, like, C++ is becoming a more convenient language. Uh, a real talk, it is becoming more convenient. But that doesn't mean it, it's not without its difficulties. And legacy is a large part of what you do. So it can be really difficult, right? It is. So C++ you know? is pretty great. And you may think it's worthwhile learning. But before jumping into a C++ tutorial, it's worth understanding some of the drawbacks to okay, the language. Okay, let's go. Maybe the I, okay. tooling around C++ is nowhere near as wonderful as it is in other languages. 
In fact, organizing your code project and build tools are probably I some of the harder parts part. of using C++. There's hey, kids, you want to learn a language called C++? Well, let me teach you CMake! You're <laughs> just like, what? What does CMake do? CMake makes make files! And you're like, what? What do make files do? Make files makes the project! You're like, what? What the f*** are we talking about here? <laughs> How did we land here? There's very little hand-holding here unless you use an IDE, which I'd probably recommend to somebody <laughs> new to C++. Setting up your project with configurations and make files is going mm. to be way too much just to get started. Oh, look not at this only guy. that, Use you have a file. fundamental lack. He's not ready. He's not ready for enterprise. Lack of dependency management available to you. Instead, yep. relying on system libraries instead of what other languages provide, such yep. as npm for Node.js or pip with Python. I actually think Go does it the best. I think Go using GitHub or any Git URL is truly, or any URL type resource out item, I think truly is the best way to go about it. I absolutely love Git's library management. I, I just think, or Git, Go's library management, I just think it's the best. However, this does mean you'll have a greater understanding of your operating system and how to deploy code differently to other languages. If you really want to learn as much as you can about software development, then C++ can help you get there. But if you just want to build something as quick as possible, then C++ is probably not the right choice. Correct. It's no secret that C++ is incredibly complex. In fact, this complexity has been the main point of criticism from many notable programmers, such as Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, Rob Pike, one of the creators of both Go and Unix, and Ken Thompson, who designed the predecessor to the C programming language. You know, I just love the fact that they actually put, they accidentally uh, put in the wrong character. Clearly, they put in one of the core Rust maintainers in here. Um, they clearly didn't put in Ken Thompson. Okay, clearly one of the core Rust maintainers here. B for Barbie. C++ itself has many, many features, all of which you'll end up encountering as you slowly progress you through like learning that the language. There? Each of these features comes with its <laughs> own set of caveats, removed. and Beautiful. you're likely going to break things over and over God again. Godbolt is a real person. That this is good. all part of the process, however. And with the PTSD you gain from learning the language, you will come through the other side a better developer for it. This, for me, is the greatest reason to learn C++. And you'll learn concepts about software engineering that you'll be able to take with you to pretty much any other language. Yep. Except maybe Haskell. Which is another topic for another time. <laughs> Avoid success at all costs. <laughs> Classic Haskell. Avoiding success at all. <laughs> Successfully avoiding success. Oh, man. Hey, that was a great video. I do agree, especially the last part about learning C++. Nothing has made me write better JavaScript than understanding how memory and things work. It is a vitally important task you should consider doing, which is to understand the difference between a heap and the stack, just managing your own memory, freeing it, and then starting to just, in your head, think about the GC. When you go into your program, your inevitable crappy JavaScript program that you're trying to make the best, and you're just doing things like const A equals some other B, some other C, right? And you can go, wait a second, what's happening here? I know what's happening because I've written some C++. I can kind of understand what's going on here. Yeah, maybe I should find a better way of doing this, right? Just writing non-pessimized code. Because if you look at most of JavaScript, it's just pessimized code after pessimized code because it's just a super simple abstraction to do that. It's not a bad thing because it allows you to move fast. It's a bad thing when everyone does it and you grow a project out of scope of being able to make a simple change. Like there's this thing that shows up in React where they say, if you make this change in React, um, it's considered kind of bad practice it can cause a lot of re-renders when you don't realize it it's kind of caused a lot of garbage collection blah 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 and what it is is passing in raw dogged objects as props right and so that's considered a bad thing so i built the little uh lsp uh called uh, js perf and what it can do is as a cli application it can go in there and it can scan an entire directory and tell you everywhere that you're passing in a raw dogged object or a raw dogged array i could even do functions and things like that and it turns out in the TVUI code base at Netflix, there was over 1,300 occurrences in production code. It, the problem is, is that one uh, one-time decision is never pretty much ever a bad thing. 
It's when you have that one-time decision that's made by 50 people over the course of several years, you just build a project that probably re-renders way more times than it needs to and probably just has a bunch of problems, a bunch of time spent in a garbage collection that doesn't isn't needed, all because a bunch of small bad decisions equal a bad decision overall. Super hard to track down impossible to try to fix it's just not trivial and so that's why it's like a big thing i try to think about which is avoid pessimization and where that came from was just uh you know uh, casey moratori was the one that really kind of voiced it in such a good way but b is just all those years of just using rust using c plus plus using something that kind of really teaches me about how this stuff uh, like how the world works right and so i don't know just a thought something that i've really appreciated something that i've genuinely enjoyed so i hope that you like this i hope that you enjoyed all this the name is the primogen <laughs>